Welcome to Draw Studio. Today we're going to learn about the elements of design, pattern, and texture, and how they affect our visual senses. Let's get started. Pattern and texture are part of the elements of design, the things that we design with. Pattern surrounds us. There are patterns in nature, we build with patterns, and we decorate our spaces with patterns. A pattern is simply the repetition of one or more motifs. Humans seem to have an innate need to decorate with pattern, like this scarf from Eastern India. The motif is a floral crest bordered by diagonal vine shapes. There is a larger leaf motif in each corner, which adds a visual contrast to the smaller motif of the main pattern. The pattern is done in gold on a deep purple field, and this use of contrasting colors adds to the beauty of the design. Pattern creates visual delight to the human mind, and nearly all cultures use pattern as a means of decoration. This Greek perfume jar uses bands of lines and zigzag motifs with contrasting colors. This Peruvian bottle uses a motif of complex geometric shapes. And this Chinese porcelain vessel uses flower motifs in cobalt blue, the only color that withstands the high heat of firing porcelain. While many patterns are shared across cultures, we can see how these patterns uniquely describe the cultural aesthetics of the region and the time period they come from. Other patterns are deeply symbolic or used in ritual. The Chilcot Tlingit people of the Pacific Northwest use abstracted patterns of animals to illustrate their ancestral clans. Here we see ravens, eagles, and other animals adorning a dance blanket Blankets like this would have been used by important tribe members in rituals or ceremonies. The pattern here is more than just decorative, but performs an important function to the people of this culture. Many patterns are built on geometric tessellations. A tessellation starts with a simple geometric shape, like a square, hexagon, circle, etc., that is then divided using geometric divisions. These divisions can be divided and subdivided to create complex patterns within the geometric shape. The design that is created is called a tile and is then used to build an even more complex pattern. The tile is tessellated or repeated by interlocking many of the tiles together. This creates incredibly complex patterns within patterns like this beautiful and dizzying wall pattern from 15th century Egypt. Organic objects can be tessellated too, like this woven panel from Italy. It repeats a bird and animal motif by alternating the direction the motifs are facing. The motifs connect and tessellate like the 15th century wall design from Egypt, but the tiles that are repeated have no geometric lines in them. The underlying structure is geometric, but built with organic motifs. Patterns can also be asymmetrical repetitions, without an underlying tessellation or geometry. Japanese design celebrates the irregularity of nature and also the principle of no tan, or the balance of opposites in design. This pattern emphasizes those ideas by arranging the motifs in an asymmetrical way and alternating them as black and white shapes that create an active but balanced design of equivocal space. Pattern can also enhance pictorial images. This print of a mother and child by Mary Cassatt uses pattern to add visual interest and contrast to her image. The design is punctuated by areas of flat color, like the figure skin, floor, and bed. She contrasts these flat areas with patterns, like the wallpaper, chair, and the mother's dress. Aside from creating inherent variation and visual interest, the contrast between the flat colors and patterns makes the figures pop out and separates them from the space around. This draws the eye in and emphasizes the subject of the print. Gustav Klimt was another artist who used patterns in his work. Nearly every area of his work, The Kiss, uses a variety of different patterns. The foreground flowers create a pattern of repeating shapes and colors. The background has a pattern of irregular dots and both figures are cloaked in clothing with geometric and organic shapes. This gives his work an energy and rhythm. The choice of motifs implies something different about each figure also. The male figure has mostly dark rectangles, suggesting strength and stability, whereas the female figure is made up of curvilinear circles, feeling more fluid and soft. Using angular shapes for the masculine and round shapes for the feminine is an ancient design motif that goes back to the very origin of art. 
but notice within the male figure's pattern, there are a few curvilinear lines. And in the female's pattern, there are a few squares. This hints at their connection and helps unify them. Here, Klimt is using pattern not only to create visual interest, but also as a narrative device to help tell his story. Texture is similar to a pattern, but the repeated elements create a sensation of how smooth or rough a surface feels. Seeing a texture activates the part of our brain that holds our sense memories of touch, which adds a layer of physicality to our perception of a visual image. Jan Sibirex uses delicate washes to carefully illustrate the irregular textures of these trees. The subtle attention to the hard and soft edges and value changes mimics the crisp, rough texture. We've all probably felt tree bark in our lives, or something that has a similar texture, and that remembered sensation becomes part of the experience of looking at this work. Esther Howland was a Victorian entrepreneur who built a successful business making handcrafted Valentine's Day cards. Her cards, which are credited for popularizing Valentine's Day in America, were made with collage materials like metal leaf paper, die-cut lace, and lithographic prints, giving them an actual texture. These handheld artworks would have engaged the viewer's sense of touch, along with the visual perceptions of the imagery, engaging multiple parts of the brain, not to mention the roller coaster of emotions sparked by getting a Valentine's Day card. Having actual texture the viewer interacts with creates a new sensory experience for the artwork. But even if we can't touch the actual texture, merely observing it will activate a similar sensation in our mind. This is true for another form of actual texture called impasto. Impasto is when an artist uses a thick application of paint that creates a surface texture on their work. Van Gogh used impasto in his works, which became part of the rhythmic structure. The direction of the brushstrokes are used as a device to lead the eye around the image and create a sense of energy. But light will catch the edges of the impasto, giving the strokes an actual dimension, making them exist in your space. This will grab a hold of your sense of touch. Bringing the brush strokes into your space helps make his paintings vibrate with emotional impact. This is a great example of why we must view art in person, because many of the elements of design won't transmit through a screen or a book. Rembrandt used impasto to show the subtle textures of human skin. These areas of actual texture catch the light, creating a tactile quality suggesting the reality of pores and wrinkles. The delicate texture in his work seems to breathe life in his portraits, more so than the highly blended soft skin tones of some of his contemporaries. He also balanced areas of texture against smoothly painted areas to make the figure pop off the canvas and interact with the viewer. Artists can also activate our sensations of touch simply by implying texture. This painting of a poultry market by Jose Viega Cordero expertly captures the variety of surface textures. With a few brush strokes, he implies the roughly applied plaster on the wall, the old dried wood, and the worn leather strap. The artist even signs his name in the upper right as though someone had inscribed it into wet plaster. Our mind searches the library of sensations we have experienced and matches them up with indications of texture made by the artist. This subtle rendering of texture adds a level of interest and engagement in our minds. While the poultry market expertly implies texture with well-planned strokes, other artists paint textures with a level of realism that can trick our mind. When an image reaches this level of illusion, we call it verisimilitude, meaning giving the appearance it is real. William Harnett was an artist who could create this astounding level of verisimilitude. Every detail of this oil painting is painstakingly rendered to look real, even upon the closest inspection. The torn paper and the faded velvet ribbon, the wood grain and knots, the frayed string casting a soft shadow, the minute highlights on the rough carved name, even the irregular graphite pencil marks, glued newspaper, and faded wood make it as though we can tangibly feel the surface. This type of illusionary experience creates an act of engagement and a sense of wonder in our mind. Pattern and texture can be used to create visual interest, tell a story, 
or engage different parts of our brain. They are powerful tools in the artist's visual toolbox. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to go to drosh.com for more information on these topics and many more. If you want to see more videos like this, like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one.